In the 1880s, America was the global epicenter of the whaling industry. The American whaling fleet totaled 640 ships, which was more than triple the rest of the world combined. But in just 50 years, that same industry would decline by 90%, and today, whaling is banned in America. So we're going to discuss how and why American whaling had such an incredible rise and fall, and specifically why it's particularly relevant even today. The truth is people have been whaling for thousands of years all over the world. It has never been a niche or localized industry. Whaling fueled civilizations for literally millennia. Inuits hunted whales in the Arctic, Europeans hunted in the Atlantic, and Japanese people whaled in the Pacific. It's easy for us as modern people to think of whaling as barbaric and cruel, but early primitive whale hunting was fairly responsible and people used every piece of the whale. Meat, skin, blubber, and organs were sources of year-round nutrition. In colder climates, these types of calorie-dense foods were extremely important. Bones were used for tool making as well as ceremonial purposes in some cultures. Even the whale's filter feeding system called baleen was often woven into baskets or used as fishing line. And when you consider the numbers in which these early people killed whales, or rather didn't kill whales, it was actually a fairly responsible, sustainable way of life. But as civilization developed, the demand for whale parts grew right alongside it. In colonial America, whale oil was used to fuel lamps, and even Benjamin Franklin once expressed his love for a specific type of whale oil candle. Both corsets and hoop skirts were constructed from whalebone, and whale baleen was essentially used in the same way that plastic is today. Enterprising colonial Americans were happy to meet these growing needs. Alongside the growing whale demand, the world was undergoing a period of radical technological advancement. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the American whaling fleet put this technology to good use. The first way they did this was simply by sailing bigger ships with more sophisticated maps and navigational tools. Harpoon technology was also experiencing its own breakthroughs with more advanced effective harpoon heads available and steam-powered harpoon guns becoming increasingly popular. Even ships themselves had become easier to use through the invention of the winch to furl and unfurl large sails. At this point, working aboard a ship was not physically easy by any means, but these technologies made it much simpler. It became unskilled labor. The American whaling fleet could now employ just about anyone with two hands and two legs, which allowed their operations to grow significantly. Labor for these whaling ships became both cheap and increasingly available. It's also worth noting that the pay structure for seamen was not a flat rate. Instead, crew members earned a percentage of the ship's entire earnings. As you can imagine, this proved to be very motivational in hunting more, bigger, and better for everyone on board. So in the mid-1800s, American whaling was at its peak. The same technological advancements that enabled whalers had also led to a significant increase in the demand for whale-based goods. Whale oil was used to lubricate all of these new mechanical innovations, including guns, watches, clocks, sewing machines, and typewriters. Whale oil powered virtually every lantern, lighthouse, and street light in America. And generally, this type of increased industrialization results in an increased population. There were more people, so the demand for whale parts continued to climb. Around this time, whaling was the fifth largest industry in America. For some perspective, the modern American entertainment industry is significantly smaller than whaling was at its prime. Whaling was powering America in the mid-1800s. Whale parts were essential for the everyday function of society. In fact, New Bedford, Massachusetts, a town that most people probably haven't even heard of today, became the wealthiest city in the country from its whaling revenue alone. But like most things that rise so meteorically, the swift fall of whaling was imminent. There were a few reasons for the decline of whaling, and one of those was petroleum towards the late 19th century. Petroleum was easier and cheaper to access, it was more reliable to use, and in general, it was just a much superior fuel and lubricant to whale oil. Kerosene also came into popularity, and these alternative sources of fuel all but doomed America's need for whale oil. In 1859, at the peak of whaling, 
America produced about 2,000 barrels of petroleum every year. By 1900, that number escalated to 2,000 barrels every second. Alongside this, whale populations were sharply declining, and whale oil was becoming more expensive, dangerous, and difficult to get. The last reason for whaling's demise was basically outsourcing. U.S. whalers simply became too expensive. Near the peak of American whaling, an American crew member was paid about three times more than a whaler in the fledgling Norwegian industry. And not only did countries like Norway have much cheaper labor, they now had access to all of the technology that led to America's dominance in the whaling industry. American capitalists could see the signs of the impending collapse, so they began to shift their efforts towards other ventures, like railroads, petroleum, and manufacturing. So by the 20th century, American whaling was basically a dead industry. It's not difficult at all to find parallels between the story of American whaling and the modern world. Unfettered capitalism, exploitation of the natural world, rapidly changing technology, these are all pretty well demonstrated by the rise and fall of whaling. But the one that is particularly relevant today is best exemplified by a quote from a mid-1800s whaler's journal. Everything is drenched with oil. Shirts and trousers are dripping with the loathsome stuff. The pores of the skin are filled with it. Feet, hands, and hair all are full of oil. From the smell and taste of blubber raw, boiling, and burning, there is no relief or place of refuge. Whalers did not like their line of work. It was not some great adventure like it's been depicted in books and movies. Whaling was dirty, dangerous, and painful for just about everyone involved. The exception being those who actually reaped its benefits. <laughs>